The Innovators Network. Welcome to the Killer Innovation Show, the longest continuously produced podcast in history. Each week, Phil McKinney brings you the insights and strategies to amplify your creativity and innovation skills. Here's your host, Phil McKinney. So how are you doing? Today's show is one that I, it, it's almost a show that I'm talking to myself. This is something that I struggle with, and that is getting myself out of a rut, getting myself out of patterns of doing the same thing the same way every day. It's about challenging myself to look with fresh eyes. Now, I've written about this, talked about this in the past, but I thought that it was about time for me to re-talk about, reintroduce, share with you some updated thoughts around seeing with fresh eyes, creating ideas, creating new ideas with fresh eyes. Now, what do I mean by fresh eyes? It's seeing something as if you were seeing it for the first time. And we need to get ourselves out of the rut. We need to not gloss over. You know, we've seen the exact same thing the same way for years. We've seen people do the same thing the same way for years. And we just kind of gloss mentally over it. And the result is, is we don't see the problems. We don't see the opportunities for innovation. We don't see the opportunity to do something different. And it ranges not just from a customer's problem that we overlook, or but it could also be processes and a variety of different things. So that is what today's show is all about. It's about this whole concept of finding creative ideas from fresh eyes. How do you find them? How do you see them? How do you exercise? How do you build up your fresh eyes? so that you see, that you observe, that you get out of these ruts that we have found ourselves. Before we jump into today's show, got a favor to ask, like, follow, and share. So like what, like the show, follow us on social media. You can find me anywhere. Just look for Phil McKinney, all one word, no spaces. That's where we're at on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all of them. Um, and then share. Let other people know about today's episode, particularly if you are a team member, or maybe your entire team, or maybe even your entire organization is struggling from being caught in the rut and not looking at it, everything from a standpoint of fresh eyes. So please, please share. So without further ado, let's jump into this week's episode. This episode is sponsored by Zoom. With Zoom, you can streamline your communication, collaboration, and creativity all in one place. Zoom is the market-leading platform that provides video meetings, voice, webinars, and chat across desktops, phones, tablets, and conference room systems. To learn more about Zoom and sign up for your free account, visit KillerInnovations.com slash Zoom. It's hard to believe that I've been involved in the innovation game as long as I have been. I just celebrated my 40th wedding anniversary. I look back on my career and probably 35 years of that, I've been in the innovation game, creating, inventing, launching new products, launching new services, and then eventually teaching others how to create, ideate, invent, launch their own innovations. Now, over that time, experience is great. Experience helps you to kind of see what's happening, read the tea leaves, adjust your strategies and adjust your plans. But that experience, that history can also hurt you. It can actually cause you to fall into these traps, these ruts, these into patterns that just repeat themselves. You find yourself doing the exact same thing in the exact same way over and over and over again. Now, when it comes to innovation, that is a challenge, right? People will invent their innovation process, and then they just kind of lock in on it. They are stuck in doing innovation in one specific way. And you've heard me talk about this when I talk about FIRE framework, the focus, ideation, 
ranking and execution framework. And that is, that's a framework. On top of it, you're building your specific processes, whether you believe in uh, brainstorming or uh, electronic suggestion systems or surveying methodologies for idea generation, whatever you use. Don't get stuck in the rut of doing it the same way. Ideate that, change it, adapt it. It's constantly forcing yourself to look at things with fresh eyes. And what do I mean by fresh eyes? The eyes that you looked at when you were excited, the first time you invented, the first time you looked at a new problem, that time when you saw something that you hadn't seen before. We tend to get into the ruts and we just kind of ignore anything new. We overlook those opportunities to actually generate new ideas. Creating new ideas, finding those next ideas that turn into breakthrough game-changing innovations can come from fresh eyes. You need to retrain yourself to just look differently. Recall what it was like back before you become calloused and an expert. So go back to being a novice and looking at problems in a different way. Now, how many of us fall into these ruts? We all do. I do it. I do it all the time. You know, for instance, driving the same way to work, doing the exact same patterns in the morning. What do you do when you get up? In my case, I get up, I take my dog out, bring her in, feed her. Then I, you know, get myself ready to get into my office and then become productive. It's the exact same process each and every day. Now, that's great from the standpoint of I know exactly what my next step is. The bad part is, is if something should happen in the morning and interrupt the rut or interrupt the pattern, it throws me off. It totally distracts me. And then all of a sudden I can't pick up what was the next step I needed to do. And then I overlook something. I overlook doing something that I should have done. And it just is totally disruptive. Ruts can lead to getting caught in these repeating patterns. Now, for some of you, maybe driving to work the exact same way, uh, doing the exact same thing in the morning and in the evening, um, same conversations you have repeatedly day in and day out, maybe with your spouse or your children, Right? We all get caught in these ruts. We have both personal ruts and professional ruts that will get in the way. So the question is, is how do you break the rut? How do you get out of that rut in order to just change it up, add some variety, cause your brain to have to think differently? To have to recall what the next thing was or to recall, don't forget to do X even though you got interrupted and the pattern got changed or whatever it might be. Well, one of these is, is how do you look at fresh eyes? So, you know, when we think about fresh eyes, it's really about seeing something as if we were seeing it for the first time, even though we'd seen it a thousand times. Fresh eyes is seeing something as if we are seeing it for the first time. No biases, no preconceived right or wrong answers, and no default answers, no automatic reactions like, oh, I've seen this before, and therefore I know exactly what's going to happen. Those all kind of mix in and cloud our ability to see something different, to learn something different. Um, and this skin falls into um, causing our brains to have to think. It's easy to get in the rut because we just let our brains go into coast mode. We just do the same thing day in, day out, over and over again. Now, I get, I've written about this in the past. There was a, a blog post I did back in a couple of years ago on Fresh Eyes. You can find that over um, at philmckinney.com, and I'm using a bunch of that material here. Because I get questions about this, like, how do I see ideas? How do I find a, a problem to go solve that I can go build into a product and have success? The, the, the question here is, is how do you see? How do you observe? The skill of observation. 
how do you not get into the trap of just looking but seeing? Looking is just taking in the information. Seeing is having that curiosity to look deeply, to not just look at what you're watching, but look at the things around. Look at the things that led up to the point of what you're looking at. What's going to happen after that? Um, I've shared many stories of standing in Best Buy stores, watching customers come in to look at HP products when I was the CTO at HP. And watching those customers, seeing them come in, have the discussions, looking at different products, and being there in the moment when they selected a product. Now, if they selected a product that was not HP, I would walk up, I would introduce myself, I would hand them my business card, which tended to freak them out. We would have a conversation saying, I'm not here to change your mind, I'm just interested in what you were thinking. I may have a perception by watching you, by seeing what you did, but I want to validate it. What was it in the decision process that you had that allowed you to make this decision? You chose this product over that product. Why? Seeing isn't just about what you do with your eyes. Seeing is also about being curious, asking questions, asking questions that you think you already know the answer because of all of your years of experience. So it's not just when I say seeing with fresh eyes, it isn't the physical action of what you see with your eyes. It is about the whole inquisitive nature of looking at what it is that you're trying to gather some information about, seeing beyond kind of the obvious to go on to that next, um, to, to get that unique insight that allows you to take that next step in whatever idea you're working on. Now, in some cases, it's very hard. You may not be able to get yourself to look at a problem or to solve a problem with fresh eyes, to come up with creative ideas that lead to some form of innovation. So in those cases, you may have to go outside. You may have to bring in fresh eyes from outside your industry or outside the area of expertise to look at something in a completely new and different way. Now, here's a story I've shared it in the past. I'm going to share it again. And it's a story about innovating potato chips. This is a great example of outside fresh eye expertise. So a major manufacturer of potato chips, they were struggling with a big problem. Their chips just had too much oil. They were too greasy at the end of the manufacturing process. Customers were complaining. Now, their experts felt, oh, we've got this, we've got this figured out. We had a solution where we had too much salt on potato chips, and we solved it. We solved it by shaking the potato chips. We shook the salt off, so we'll just shake the oil off. So they added a step where they would try to shake the oil off. However, it did not work. So they shook the chips a little harder until the oil came off. What do you think the byproduct of that was? Lots of broken potato chips. So what were they going to do? The, the obvious answer to them was shake it, just like they shook the salt. In order to get the salt off, just shake it and get the oil off. But that didn't work. What were they do? The experts were stumped because they thought they knew the obvious path to the answer. So they decided to crowdsource it. They open sourced the innovation. They stated the problem and published it, soliciting ideas from people on how to solve too, many oil, too much oil on potato chips. And lo and behold, the solution to the problem came from a very unlikely person. In this case, the solution came from a concert violinist. The violinist looked at the problem and realized that it resembled something that they had seen. And that was when a violin hits a very specific tone, water will beat up and dance. The resonance of that tone will cause the water to beat up and dance. So, the violinist proposed playing a certain note that would cause the oil on the potato chips to beat up and jump off the chip. And guess what? 
it worked. Here was a solution not found by the experts that have years of experience, that have seen this problem before. Oh, this answer is obvious. These, this solution came not by those experts, but, but from an unexpected source. So what's the lesson for all of this? What is it I'm trying to, um, to share here? And that is, is that you can do, you can apply the exact same approach. You can ask yourself about um, the whole process of, of the fresh eyes. Now, first step of this is just being aware that you're seeing with old eyes, not old eyes by age. Look, you know, I just turned 60, so I'm, I'm getting, trying to get comfortable with the fact that I am getting old, right? But be aware that you may not be doing it intentionally, but you are seeing with old eyes. You are seeing with your years of experience and your years of expertise. And look, experience and expertise is great. It's hugely beneficial. But you're seeing with those old eyes. And it's not just you, but there's also what I would call organizational eyes. Eyes of how the organization thinks. Like we always have done it this way. We've been in this industry for 50 years, and we've done it a certain way, right? Um, and that is this, you know, that's the challenge. How do you break that? So step one is just be self-aware. You're looking at everything with old eyes. Step two is build up the habit of looking at everything with fresh eyes, not just when you got to solve the problem. This turns into being a mental habit, asking the obvious question, asking the questions and looking at something, you know, differently, doing something differently from what you normally would always do it. Try to change that up. And when you're stuck, ask for fresh eyes from non-experts. You may be very, very surprised at who can provide you that 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 unique insight, that visibility into something that you just were overlooking. Now, this applies not just to when you're brainstorming, but it also can be critical when you're trying to create ideas, when you're trying to identify problems, when you're trying to um, uh, come up with an idea that may lead to a new product or service. In this case, why is this so hard? This is hard because when we look at it and we are experts and we've created the solution in our head, we're thinking the solution's already done. I've come up with the solution in my head. And if I'm smart enough to come up with the solution, obviously somebody else has come up with the solution. And therefore, there's probably already something out there. This person just doesn't know it's available. Wrong assumption. Just because you think of it doesn't mean anybody else has thought about it. Just because you observe it doesn't mean anybody else has observed it. You are unique. Do not get caught in that rut of assuming if I see it, if my eyes have seen it, and I easily identified it, anybody else could do it. You are unique. You may have seen something that nobody else has seen. So do not get caught in that trap. Now, what do you do? How do you build up your fresh eyes? How do you build them up such that you exercise them? Just like we've talked about exercising your creative muscle, getting that creativity going every day, getting up early and brainstorming, right? This is one more arsenal to, the, to those exercise routines is building up your fresh eyes. Just like in the form of physical exercise, where you're going to build up those triceps, you're going to build up those, the, uh, your quads, you're going to build up your lungs by running. You're, in the case of creativity and innovation, you need to build up the, your fresh eyes. Now, okay, how do you do that? Is, you know, are you going to do 10 curls? No. What I'm talking about here is just getting in the habit of exercising your brain, exercising your skill of observation. So some things that, to think about. One is, is drive a different way to work. Find a new route. 
Maybe notice something you didn't notice before, a restaurant that's opening, road construction that wasn't there yesterday, right? Drive a different route to work. Why do I think that this is such a great exercise? I don't know about you, but when I get up and I drive, I drive the exact same way to work, and I cannot tell you how many times when I get into the parking lot and I went and I turn off my car, I couldn't tell you what I saw or didn't saw on the drive. I just kind of got fell into the zone. I'm listening to an audio book or a podcast in the car. And I just kind of just do the road routine, driving the exact same roads. When I'm driving a different way, something out some a way that I've never driven before. What am I looking for? I'm looking for milestones. I'm watching the GPS to say, I need to turn in 500 feet. Oh, I'm turning on a street I don't know. Is this a two lane or one lane? Is it, I'm coming into a school zone. Is there kids going to be on the street? You know, oh, there's a restaurant that I didn't even know existed. That looks interesting. What are you doing while you're driving? Is, is you're, you're getting your, you're opening up your eyes. You're gotten out of that rut to get more input, more observation. So driving a different way to work, great exercise from the standpoint of uh, building up your uh, fresh eyes. The other um, way to build them up is a challenge or process you're using. If you've got a problem, a, a process that you do, whether you're doing technology development or you're doing a, a marketing plan to launch a new product or you're trying to create a process to raise money for a nonprofit, whatever it is, challenge a process. If the process got established years ago and you've just been using it over and over again, challenge yourself. Say, let's tear this process apart and rebuild it. Let's change this process. Let's change this process for the better, for raise more money or reduce the amount of time or whatever. Um, in my own experience, this occurred, I don't know, it's got to be Seven, eight years ago, we kicked off a project <clears throat> and normally, you know, projects, this was a very well-defined, understood project. We had done it multiple generations before and on average, it took five, five and a half years. From the time you started until everything was done and it was in the market and services were available. We didn't have five, five and a half years. We came in and said, we have to do this in two and a half years. Everybody said it could not be done. Oh, my gosh, there's no way to do it. We can't do it. I said, nope, we're going to do this in two and a half years. We're going to redesign the process to get this done in two and a half years. What did we do? We delivered it in two and a half years. Huge impact, hugely positive, and a great example of don't get stuck doing it the same way you've always done it. Don't get cut, caught in the rut. Change the rut. Um, the, other, the third way to building fresh eyes is ask for someone that's not an expert to give you feedback. Give you their thoughts. Include them in your brainstorming activities. Include them in your ideation activities. Learn from them. Hang out with people that have different expertise, different backgrounds. Um, different age. Let their eyes be your eyes. See and learn how to see the way they see things. So ask that non-expert, that non-obvious person for their thoughts, for their ideas, for their input. Not just as kind of a passive thing of, you know, you know, checking a box but truly see through their eyes. See it as, it as they see it. So again, build your fresh eyes. Exercise your fresh eyes. It's all about creating ideas, creating new ideas with fresh eyes, looking at it differently. And you need to build them up. You need to exercise them. So drive a different way. Tomorrow, drive a different way. Do a different process in the morning to get up, to get ready to work. Try, break your processes, do them differently. And then reach out to people that have a different level of expertise. Invite people who you would never, ever consider seeking out their input, whether they're completely not even the target customer segment 
or they have no expertise, they're not from your industry, they're not from your country, but find those people, invite them to give you feedback, and listen. Listen. Active listening. Try to see through their fresh eyes. They're seeing your opportunity. They're seeing your problem for the first time. They, by definition, are fresh eyes. Those are what opportunities will create some brilliant ideas that will lead to game-changing breakthrough innovations that can transform you, your organization, and more importantly, you can solve the problems that transforms society. So my challenge to you is tomorrow, get up, change your process, change the way you work, where, how do you get to work, change how you get ready for going to work, change your process. That is your challenge for tomorrow. So as we wrap up today, thank you for your time. Really do appreciate it. Help me pay it forward. When I started this podcast back in 2005, wow, that's been a long time. My mentor, Bob Davis, put in a huge amount of time early in my career. When I asked him how to pay it back, he laughed. He says, you can't pay it back. You need to pay it forward. That was the impetus for starting the podcast back in 2005. And that's why we have been at this now since then, producing up to on the average of about 50 new content shows each and every year. The way you can help me pay it forward is by telling others. Also, you can do it by posting a review, posting a comment, wherever you get your content from, whether that's YouTube or Spotify or iHeartRadio or uh, iTunes or Google Podcasts, wherever you get the show, post a comment, post a like, tell others, help me pay it forward. We are on the road traveling. We are actually now in Central Florida. We will be heading up to the Northeast now and then eventually making it back to Colorado. Um, as I've talked about before, the second week of October, I will be at the uh, uh, on the East Coast again. If you or you know of somebody that might be a great guest to come on to the mobile studio in the form of our bus, uh, we'd love to hear about it, and we would uh, love to uh, find a way to meet up and uh, interview innovators doing interesting things. So with that, I want to just say thanks for the time. Thanks for uh, this valuable asset of time to listen to the show, to engage. Would love to hear your feedback. Join the community. Theinnovators.community is where uh, the whole community of innovators from around the world are hanging out, talking, chatting, engaging, sharing expertise, sharing information, uh, asking for help, uh, all the things around that would help us as a community of innovators, um, one, contribute, but also, two, find like-minded people because, look, innovation is hard. You need a community. Join the community. And it's over at theinnovators.community. And with that, thank you again for your time. Really appreciate it. We'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Podcasting nonstop since 2005, this has been the Killer Innovation Show on the Innovators Network. This show is distributed by the Innovators Network. For more information and other great shows and content, visit theinnovators.network. <laughs>